Hey, wonderful people. It turns out that Barbie knows more about the Manhattan Project than I do. Fair enough. I wonder if there's a nuclear physicist outfit for the Barbie doll. I'm sure there is. Anyway, to live up to my motto, the truth is out there, your truth, I feel like I should respect social media science and do a mistake update from yesterday's film with a few major errors in it. So today I learn from you, as I always do. Some of you have made some excellent historical corrections. <laughs> if you're watching this film first, it doesn't make any sense. So go away now and watch the first film and then come back and you'll learn some of the things that I didn't quite get right or some details that need correcting. Wiley and I say hi. She's eating her breakfast. The basic principle still is that the Manhattan Project needed a containment vessel, a secret unfunded containment vessel called Jumbo. Here it is. They were so worried about the implosion conventional explosives actually working all at the perfect time that it was possible that this extremely rare fissile material would be spread around the desert and they couldn't afford that. So let's talk about actually what I got wrong and the fissile material. So they need a material that releases multiple neutrons. Neutrons are the key. It's no good making one. You need to make at least two, if not more. And uranium-235 was amazing. But in fact, it's very, very, very hard to find naturally. And it needed to be processed, not at Hanford, but at Oak Ridge. And that was what they did at Oak Ridge. Here are the centrifuges to separate the heavy and the light isotopes of uranium. But they weren't making enough. There might be a better way. So as World War II was progressing, and we were getting near the end of it, and they still didn't have a bomb, they needed to speed up the neutron releasing material. And they discovered that you can cook uranium, literally, just let it fizzle in a reactor. And one of the byproducts of uranium as it decays is this really weird, incredibly powerful stuff called plutonium. We've all heard of plutonium today. And so they decided they could actually build a bomb quicker with more plutonium if they could make it. And that's what they actually made in the multiple reactors at the Hanford site not uranium. So Oak Ridge, centrifuges, Hanford, plutonium cooking. And it was the plutonium that they actually tested for the Trinity test. The first test wasn't a uranium bomb, it was actually plutonium. If anything, plutonium was cheaper. It was easier to make now at Hanford that they'd built specially for the Manhattan Project than the incredibly rare uranium-235 isotope. Thank you very much. And I also heard from a civil nuclear power station engineer who took me to task saying that nuclear power stations are atomic bombs. Now, you're absolutely right. I was meaning that nuclear power stations, like an atomic bomb, also have a chain reaction. But of course, the engineering, your job that you do very well, is to control the chain reaction so it doesn't run away with itself. So the whole idea, the whole concept of a nuclear power station is to contain the reaction. And that's why they have moderators like boron rods or water or other moderating material. So yes, it was oversimplistic of me, but I wanted to make the point that nuclear power stations and atomic bombs use the same principle. It's about neutrons being a chain reaction. And if you can control them, jolly good. You can make hot stuff rather than a bomb. And so thank you, loyal Patreons and YouTube viewers, putting me right. And that's perfect. That's what I like. I like to introduce maybe a novel topic. A number of you hadn't heard about the Jumbo device, so that was new for you. But the details of nuclear engineering, you know better than I do. Because the truth is out there.